Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 338, The Cash Only Practice of Medicine. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppet and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Moppin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Moppin's office is currently accepting new patients. In our last episode, we talked a lot about the existing medical system in the United States and some of the efforts that are being made to change it. Uh, it's, it's a massive system. And one of the, the interesting pieces of it being such a massive system is that you have this aggregate that you have to move culturally one way or the other, but it's made up of individual people. Mm-hmm. And one of the groups of individual people that, if that's not a contradiction in terms, that make up uh, this massive healthcare system are the doctors. And doctors are not plug-in components. They're, they're by their nature and their training. They're not people that will be content to just go and be the round peg in the round hole for all of their lives and go where they're told to go and do what they're told to do. Uh, that's why unless they, it makes sense. It, unless it makes sense uh, for a bigger agenda. But, mm-hmm. but they, they are constantly looking at ways to problem solve. They have been trained to do that and they want to use that skill in the service of healthcare, of mm-hmm. making people healthy. And at the same time, they want to make an, a decent living mm-hmm. because they, they've spent a lot of money and time getting trained and prepared to be able to go out and do what they want to do. So given the limitations of the systemic intrusion in medical care, for good or bad, doctors are constantly trying to think of, what if we did this a little differently? What if, what if we had a different way to do this? And they adapt as the system changes. So they say, well, because it's a Darwinian thing. Yeah. It's, it's about adaptation mm-hmm. of, of the organism. Adapt or die. Yeah. And so what a, the, a new adaptation became in, in the recent past, five years, seven years, is that a number of doctors started to generate what were called concierge practices, where they would contract with a group of individual people for X amount of money for Y amount of services in a mm-hmm. year. And that would be the total pay. And the insurance companies were out of it. The pharmacies Mm -hmm. and pharmaceutical companies were out of it. Mm -hmm. The government regulatory was not completely out of it because it regulates even in those domains. But it gave them more freedom of time and practice. They weren't on the treadmill seeing seven or eight patients an hour, spending all their time doing paperwork and talking to insurance companies and and not staying current on medical treatments and new Mm -hmm. research and the life of the patient. Mm -hmm. So they found these doctors found this is a transitional thing that's making medicine survivable for me. Mm-hmm. Another strategy that has now begun to exist mm-hmm. is cash-only practices. And there are two elements of that. The doc- one we talked about in our last uh, episode is that doctors are starting to say to all their patients, I don't deal with insurance at all. You need to pay me whatever my set fee is, and I will treat you, and I'll give you the paperwork you need. You deal with your own insurance company. Uh, and, and I have no control over what the, pharmace- uh, the pharmaceutical industry mm-hmm. says about the meds. But I can tell you what you need. I can write a prescription for it. Whether you can get it or not, that's on you. And usually that means that you have to, the, as a patient, you have to carry catastrophic insurance. Right. Even if you're going to pay your doctor to, for preventive care and, and keeping you healthy. And, but you need insur- insurance from, like we used to do in the 60s. Yeah. You, you would pay your doctor then. And then you'd have catastrophic insurance, which wasn't as nearly as expensive as it is now. And then if something terrible happened to you and you were in the hospital or in the ER, it would pay for that. But otherwise, it was it, you could save money every year to put into maybe even an HSA, which yeah. is a pre-tax dollar savings program. Or you could put it in the bank and then use that when you need medical care. An if early, you don't need it, you get the money. An early version of that for me, my dad w- worked for Missouri Pacific Railroad. Mm-hmm. And they had their own hospitals, their own doctors, their own insurance. So mm-hmm. we had an insurance card. And we would go to the doctor that worked for the railroad, mm-hmm. or we'd go to the hospital mm-hmm. that was the railroad hospital. We'd just show our card. Mm-hmm. And then we didn't get a bill. We didn't pay anything. Right. We just, so I grew up thinking that's the way healthcare is supposed to be. So I you had a completely now, different experience. 
And they're like, oh, oh no, we know we need to know when your firstborn child was born. Yeah. We know how much your retirement income is. We need to because the insurance company requires that, and we're the ones collecting the information mm -hmm. for the insurance for company, the insurance company, which is kind of crazy because we aren't really paid to do that. So they they so, there's always shifting of of jobs. So some doctors are beginning to say, I'm not doing any of that. Not doing that. I, it's not that I don't care about you, and not that I don't want to help you get health care. I'll help you get health care. I won't help you deal with the bureaucracy. So I will have a contract with you, and you pay me for what I do for you, and we're clean. And some people pay a yearly fee to their internal medicine Which doctor. Is the concierge practice. At concierge practice, and then they they give them a full physical every year. They they do their lab work. They and, and they absorb those costs. Mm -hmm. You have to pay anything for that. And sometimes medicines are on top of that because medication is variable per patient. Yeah. So, so that's a concierge practice. Then there's practices. But that includes things like a well woman visit. Right. You're a well person well visit. Well person visit. And yeah. an hour long consultation, which goes over your lab and helps you make good decisions about your next year, what you should do for your situation right. to be healthy, to take care of your me your medications, and it also includes visits throughout the year. So usually that's how that works, but doctors are smart people, even if they're not business people, and most doctors who have any kind of, of talent in figuring out how to survive have figured out what would work best for their type of practice. So my practice <clears throat> is completely cash, but in a different way. You don't pay me thousands of dollars to come see me for a year. To be on your retinue. To be on my, patients, yeah, to be in my is. group of patients. Right. You, you pay for what you get, and then we give you insurance forms that are filled out and a letter of necessity for you to send to your insurance or to your HSA so that you can get reimbursed if they'll reimburse for it. For any part of it, even, even just the lab work, even if they don't do the hormone replacement. Right, and the, yeah. the, the lab work is generally paid for yeah. by insurance. Right. So, you, so the contract for your lab work is between you, your insurance and the lab. I don't get in the middle of that unless you don't have insurance. Or you and the lab. Or the, you and the, the lab. The insurance doesn't pay for it. The lab comes to you. They don't right. come back to the doctor. Right, because <laughs> I'm not collecting for it. Unless you have no insurance, then I offer my patients the discount the lab gives me. Right. So the lab has set, say the, the ticket price would be $1,000 for a lab panel. It's right. more than that. But say it's $1,000. The lab charges me 300 Wow. So, so, but then if I'm that patient and I come to you and or I 300 say, or 400, I can't remember. I say, well, I don't have insurance. And I don't have a lot of money. And you say, well, I'll let you go through me. this office for the lab. So they so pay, the they pay me bills you or are you the bill, lab bills me, the lab bills you and you pay them. Mm -hmm. So then you have to get your money from me. Right. Okay. So, so we do, so we do that yeah. because we want our pay, we have to have lab yeah. and we don't want patients to go broke trying to get their lab. Right. And so, so we need that to treat them. But for the the procedure, for them getting their hormones and getting their plan and getting the consultation with me and the nurse practitioners and the nurses, they they pay for what they get, which which I think is fairer mm -hmm. than some some of these um, franchises that doctors have thought up for hormone replacement have come out since I started practice. And Basically, you pay a bunch of money up front. If you hate it, if you don't want it, if you don't need it, if you don't, if you have a complication, you're still right. stuck. You still have all that money invested, right. and and it doesn't that that's not fair in my mind. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, you pay for what you get, right. in, in my office. But there's ways around this so that you can use pre-tax dollars. So it's a discounted dollar. You can use an HSA, which is health savings account where you or your employer match funds and put it away, and you can use that for any health care expense. That is, a, my, my practice is qualified for that. So, but the way that typically works is the, the company that you work for gives you a credit card mm -hmm. that's used for your HSA. Mm -hmm. So when you come to Dr. Malpin's office and she said, well, that'll be $500, you hand mm -hmm. her that credit card, and that bill goes to the company and they right. pay it. That's out of your fund. Mm -hmm. So you still are not writing a personal check for that amount right. of money. That's right. And so, and so you're that's, still not billing the company. And I'm not billing anybody. Right. I'm just taking the money and then and then I'm taking the money from the HSA account. Right. That it's paid directly, just like any credit card. Okay. But but what I try to offer, which is different than many other practices, is I try to offer 
total hormonal balance, meaning I'll balance all your hormones, not just estrogen, not just testosterone. Right. And I'll provide a plan for you that's eating, exercise, a plan. Not I'm not going to go exercise with you. I'm not your trainer. But I mean a plan. No, but it's a well-care approach. Right. It's a come comprehensive approach, not just, oh, I do testosterone or right. I do estrogen. Right. It's not just the sex hormones. It's yeah. all hormones. And it is, I'm, I and my nurse practitioners are all interested in your health. Well, your whole approach is symptom reduction. Right. I want you to get rid of the medicines that you're on or right. you, when you come to me, get your weight down, get your blood pressure down and, and be actively involved in making that happen because mm -hmm. hormones are the first step. Getting your hormones back as you age gives you the platform for you to then get healthy. So once we do that, then we try to get you healthier and healthier so that you look and feel better and you don't get sick. As we get older, everything fails because we didn't initially get our hormones back. Right. So, so that's why hormones are so important, but we also attend to these other things. You may have other doctors that take care of your diabetes or your high blood pressure or heart disease, but often we make some of those medications go away mm -hmm. because you get healthier. More than often, regularly. Regularly. Yeah. And so that's important to me mm -hmm. because medications are also expensive. Right. And they're more and more expensive. There's really, they've jumped drastically in the last year. And so that, that ends up being more, if we can get rid of some of those, that's more cost. That, that covers my visits. Well, it's more cost to the individual for the medicines. It's also cost for the visits to the doctor to get the medicines prescribed and checked. Right. So, so they don't have to do you, that. You lose two, three, four doctor visits a year mm -hmm. to other doctors. For sickness. And, and you lose getting and sick multiple times, which also means you lose time from work, mm -hmm. or you go to work sick and make everybody else sick, yeah. and you lose the cost of those medicines. That all comes in the package. That comes together and really does more than justify yeah. the cost that's paid to me. And, yeah. and, and I rarely have somebody that I can't do that for, yeah. unless you're totally healthy when you show up, which is not usual. That's not typical. And then I probably don't need Both to treat Most people go to the doctor when they're well. That's yeah. that's right. So So in my mind, this is my creative, adaptive way to save people money and for me to actually stay in business mm -hmm. because I can't spend an hour with a patient like I do now mm -hmm. if I'm paid by the insurance company because they pay me for seven minutes. So your practice is I a just can't do focused it. practice yes. on a particular <clears throat> aspect of medicine. And preventive. And preventive. Mm -hmm. There are other doctors that are doing the same thing. We were talking in our last episode about doctors that have a hemorrhoid center, and they just treat hemorrhoids, or doctors mm -hmm. that have a colonoscopy center, and they just do colonoscopies. Mm -hmm. They found ways to minimize their cost because they don't have to have the same insurance requirements for the full hospital. They don't have to have mm -hmm. the same staffing requirements. They're not regulated to have the same machinery. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have... Uh, a heart surgeon on hand to do a colonoscopy. Right. You know, so so you don't have to have the equipment, mm -hmm. the room, the space, the staff. The overhead's that. lower. The overhead is considerably lower. So they're learning to do that. And that's one of the the elements of the cash-based practices. Doctors are starting to find ways to practice on their own for mm -hmm. cash without insurance that makes it more possible for them to still earn a living. Because if they work for the hospital, they're going to be hospitalists. They're going to get a signed contract with the hospital, and then they're going to have to do what the hospital tells them to do. and Or they're going to work for the insurance companies indirectly by taking whatever the insurance company will pay for the procedure that mm -hmm. they do. And that keeps going down as the insurance company plays games with the hospitals about the average bill or the cost. So, so that leads us to the second leg of what we want to talk about, and that is predictability of cost in medicine. Mm -hmm. It's been historically very difficult to find out what something costs. If, mm -hmm. if I have to have uh, my wisdom teeth removed, in I can't medicine. necessarily call my dentist and say, what's that going to cost? Because mm -hmm. he's going to say, well, it depends on how many days you're in the hospital. It depends on what insurance you have, which hospital you go to. Your wisdom teeth, you don't get to go to the hospital anymore. Sorry. All right. We'll pick something. Uh, appendectomy. Appendectomy. All right. So, although that's not usually a voluntary plan yeah. thing, that you just go. Hysterectomy. Are those voluntary they're, and planned? Well, they're planned, okay, usually. They're planned. Usually they're not emergent. <clears throat> well, see, I, I wouldn't think in terms of a hysterectomy. For yeah, of course not. Uh, we can remove something. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever it needs to be. Uh, but at any rate, what has been difficult systemically is for people to come up with a predictable, maintainable cost for procedures. Now there are doctors and companies that are beginning to do that. And they're beginning to do a cash-based deal 
flat cost, one thing, like you need a knee replacement, we can do that for $12,000 at our Total. clinic in Oklahoma. And that covers everything. And including the price of the airfare to get here if you're flying in. Yeah. And the aftercare at the Holiday Inn. They, we bring send our nurses to you. They change your bandages. They give you an ice machine mm-hmm. and flow the water. You know, and you're here for four days, and then you go home. That's a flat cost. And if you have no insurance, and that's no, a deal. Well, and, and uh, by a lot, it's, by 10 it's times. It's a deal by 10 times. Mm-hmm. And even if you do have insurance, it's a deal for somebody. Either yeah. your insurance or your company. If, you're, if your company is self-insured, if it's big enough, uh, my, my wife's school district that she taught in is a self-insured school district. Mm-hmm. So they all contribute. They hire a manager that regulates this stuff. And they figure out what their health care plan is mm-hmm. going to be. Uh, if she needed a knee replacement, this self-insurance company could call this clinic in Oklahoma that does $1,500, $15,000 knee replacements. And she could go there. Mm-hmm. That's all they'd have to pay. That's all that the group. But they're not going to take insurance. Their no, but the, but the insurance. So the patient's going to have to pay it. Insured, right. And then the patient's going to have to get it. Or the HSA that'll pay it. Right. And then that'll get reimbursed mm-hmm. back to the patient. Right. So that way it's so there is some paperwork. for everybody except the hospital and the insurance companies, mm-hmm. which is what they're trying to get out from under the thumb of. Those organizations are so oppressive and regulatory and, and tight that doctors are really having trouble making a living and people are really having trouble getting health care. So... So here's what happens. So, for example, hysterectomies. When I started practice in 1985, a hysterectomy package, meaning you see your doctor, you have the visit, you're, you to talk. To find out that you need one. That you need one. Do all the tests, whatever. You do your pre, pre-op testing. You see her office manager schedules your surgery, all of the background work that yeah. it takes. Gets you admitted to the hospital on a certain day. Gets... All of your testing done pre-op. The surgical rumors are Surg- nurses ordered. Right, and then the doc- This is the doctor, and the doctor's fee takes the ho- the office part. It takes it takes the surgery itself, which could be an hour and a half to five hours. Right. Then it takes post-op care, so all the time the patient's in the hospital for several days at that time, and then going to see the patient, and, and then finally discharging the patient, then seeing the patient for six weeks follow-up. That and that used to be, in 85, and you know all the costs have gone up since 85, used to be $3,600. Okay? And that was a flat deal for the whole package. That for the doctor. For the for the right. doctor part that didn't count the hospital. That's bill not the or hospital. The that's not, no, or. and I never got you know you, I don't get paid by the hospital. I have privileges to go to that hospital. Right. So they make sure that I'm qualified. <laughs> uh, and you can use their night. I can use yeah. that. I can use you know their their uh, operating room. Right. But but my cost was thirty six hundred dollars. So over time, first they shifted it to the patient, more deductible, more copay, blah, blah, blah. So nowadays, nobody gets a hysterectomy, even if they're bleeding to death, because doctors won't do them because the key trick of insurance companies, which you should know, is to pay the doctor less than it costs them to go to the operating room. So they now pay six to nine hundred dollars for that whole service. Six to nine hundred dollars doesn't pay my malpractice that require for surgery. Mm-hmm. I should stay in the office and do office work, which is cheaper for your insurance company. So they manipulate doctors. I hate being manipulated. They manipulate us to not give good care. So if you think you're getting good care because your doctor says you don't need a hysterectomy, but you're bleeding to death. So can you say to me, all right, your wife needs a hysterectomy. If we go do this, the insurance is only going to pay nine hundred dollars for that. I can't afford to do that for $900, so you need to pay me $900, too. No, because the insurance, that that 45-page contract that I signed says that I can't balance bill. So I can't bill for the the rest rest to you, which is supposed to protect you. Not to even not make money, but to make your costs. Right, just to make my costs. I can't do that. So so that's how they, they tie us up. They tie us up by... Underpaying us like Synvisc is an injection that goes into your knee if you don't if you have knee damage but don't need a total knee yet right. and you need synovial fluid, they put a, an injection in your knee. So an insurance company will pay the doctor to put the Synvisc in, but will pay the doctor under what it costs the doctor for the Synvisc. So guess what? No one does it because they lose money. Why would anyone so, so the, the drug lose costs money? A thousand dollars. The insurance company will pay the doctor 500. Mm-hmm. So the doctor loses $500 if he puts it in your knee. Right. 
And that's that's a Medicare thing. Medicare yeah. is ma manipulating us that way, too. Right. So it's Medicare, it's insurance companies. Yeah, except Congress, in its wisdom, said that Medicare Medicare can negotiate all these things and play with the cost But factors. not with doctors. And not with drugs. They cannot bargain negotiate for drugs, volume negotiate for drug pricing. So nobody gets to control the drug company. Mm -hmm. They do whatever they want. They wake up this morning and say, you know what? Everybody's cost goes up 10%. Right. They can't. They, they can't. They, they want their profits to go up. Reason, other than that they want it, and the insurance companies control the mix. So what is happening is that more and more physicians and more and more people who can afford it, private citizens, are working outside of those systems in a cash-based practice. That's the motivation. The motivation is when a physician who's been trained twelve years spent twelve years of their life to be a physician. Right. We don't want to change our. It would be a waste to society for those doctors who are trained to be trained yeah. to, be, to be something else. Even yeah. if they own a business or run a business, it would be a waste yeah. and a loss of talent. We need doctors and we need good ones. So it is yeah. not it is not something that helps us. And, <clears throat> and they think that they can. I was told by an insurance company I was a widget. Yeah. Blue Cross Blue, Blue Shield told me I was a widget. And you know what's happening? I could be replaced in a second. What's happening? So I canceled with that Blue messaging Cross. going to doctors is that doctors that are in your position, that are really old. Thank you. Been practicing a lot of years, are I'm, saying, I don't want to mess with these people anymore. I quit. I retire. I yeah. take my marbles and go home. Mm -hmm. There's no new doctor to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And that's particularly happening in rural America. Mm -hmm. they, I have friends who have to drive 200 miles to get to a city where there's a doctor. Uh, that's a terrible no thing. It's a if horrible you're sick. thing. But that that's means what's happening. There are so fewer and fewer doctors. what they're doing yeah. to control a cost is limiting access. And even in the state, in, in St. Louis, big city, you have to wait over six months to see an endocrinologist. Or a and, psychiatrist. Or a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist. Right. The, the, what I tell patients now are, are friends who call because I'm not in private practice anymore. My daughter is suicidal. What she do? You have to go to the emergency room and say, I'm going to kill myself. That's the only way you can get in and see a psychiatrist short of so, four And months. you shouldn't have to pr commit no. fraud to get in to see a psychiatrist. Or try to hurt yourself. That's Either fraud. One. Yeah. But, I mean, if you're not really suicidal, that's fraud. Well, for so, sure. Same thing when you go to a large metropolitan emergency room. Me, my age, my looks, my demeanor. I'd say I got chest pains to jump ahead of the line. Otherwise, I'm going to sit there. But for, do you need to jump ahead of the line? That's the other thing. Should you be pushed to I the I should not be line? put in that position. I should not be dishonest. I should always be a wonderful person. But I'm a Darwinian. Uh, I want to survive. So if you're really sick yeah. and you need to see the doctor, then you would say that. Well, they if have you, triage people. Yeah. If you've, you know, they, if you've I, got a cut on your leg that needs to be stitched right. and you're not infected. bleeding to death. Yeah then you should be at the back of the line. Exactly. Somebody so, coming in from a gunshot wound needs to be treated. Right. But there's only, so it's supply and demand. And sometimes the demand, and most of the time, more and more, there's too much demand for the supply of doctors. And that was for what we were getting to. More doctors are retiring, fewer doctors coming on board. The ones that are coming on board are trying to be specialists so they don't have to mess with all this crap. Mm -hmm. And it's just getting crazy. So doctors that are out there, many of them are trying to find a survivable way to do what they chose as their life course. Treat people who are ill, provide good medical care, and make a good living. So hopefully this will help you listen as you listen to politicians talk about necessary changes. Uh, get involved. Be aware. Contact your your politician medical society of the state you can you can you yeah. can look at the medical society you can go to them you can go to get information you can all and what you can do is because we have days we have walks on jefferson city on the capitol where right. we go and visit with senators and and uh house, house members, members yeah. so you can get involved i mean everything like your your drug goes up by 20 percent, 30 percent in one year that's insane. You need to you need to write the people that make the laws and tell them about yeah, it. Flood them with obscene. it. Obscene, not insane and obscene. So there is there needs to be something that actually helps the patient, helps the doctor provide excellent medical care with enough time to think, mm -hmm. enough time to manage a patient and have a treatment plan, and also not cost a million dollars. So this, this should be available. I think there's a solution. So I think we just need our best minds working on a solution that is not marred by all of the 
interests that are necessary to run a campaign. Like that's you need right. the drug campaign, you we, need the drug companies to pay changes. for my campaign. That's ridiculous. We'll make these changes bigly and we'll make them so that we're tired of winning. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.